listening to the Full Circle Weekly News. These articles are compiled by Eric the Unready. I'm your host, Moss Bliss. This is episode 382, covering week 35, August 26th to September 1st, 2024. OSMC 2024.08-1 has been released, a media center based on Raspberry Pi single board computers or Vero set top boxes. The distribution features the Kodi Media Center and offers a complete set of tools out of the box for creating a home theater that supports displaying video in 4K, 2K, and 1080p quality. Both images for direct recording to a USB drive or SD card and specialized installers for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux are available for download. Ready-made builds are available for Raspberry Pi boards as well as for Vero 4K, 4K+, and V set-top boxes. OSMC is based on Debian and supports installation of packages from standard repositories. No knowledge of Linux is required to work with the distribution. All setup operations are performed through a graphical interface. They suggested you connect your Raspberry Pi-based media center to a TV via an HDMI port and power it via USB, which is available in some TVs. When playing video, hardware video decoding tools provided by the Broadcom Video Core Graphics Accelerator are used. OSMC has built-in support for various TV tuners, DVD adapters, and remote controls. It is possible to connect an infrared receiver via the GPIO port. Additionally, it supports network control of Kodi from a smartphone using specialized applications for iOS and Android platforms. The distribution supports AirPlay and AirTunes technologies. Theo Dirat announced that the OpenBSD project had reached a milestone where not a single file of the original code base remained unchanged or not removed. The last unchanged document was the quiz game, which recently replaced the Greek knowledge test with a test of ship terminology. OpenBSD was founded by Theo Dirat in 1995 after he and a group of like-minded people created a new open source operating system based on the NetBSD source tree, where the main development goals were portability, standardization, correct operation, proactive security, and integrated cryptographic tools. The free Office Suite Calligra 4.0 has been published. The Office Suite is built on KDE technologies and uses a single system of embedded objects for all applications of the Office Suite. The components responsible for the functionality and user interface are separated, which allows you to create both lightweight mobile and full-featured versions of the Office Suite for desktop systems on the same base. Open Document is used as a basic format. Ready-made binary builds are being prepared for Linux, FreeBSD, Mac OS, and Windows. Veracrypt 1.26.14 has been released, a fork of the TrueCrypt disk partition encryption system, which is no longer maintained. Veracrypt is notable for replacing the RIPEMD-160 algorithm used in TrueCrypt with SHA-512 and SHA-256, increasing the number of hashing iterations, simplifying the build process for Linux and Mac OS, and eliminating problems identified during the audit of TrueCrypt source code. The code developed by the Veracrypt project is distributed on the Apache 2.0 license, and borrowings from TrueCrypt continue to be supplied under the TrueCrypt license 3.0. Ready-made builds are generated for Linux, FreeBSD, Windows, and Mac OS. Microsoft has announced that it is transferring the Mono project, an alternative implementation of the .NET platform, to WineHQ, an organization that develops an open implementation of the Win32 API. Microsoft acquired the Mono project after acquiring Xamarin in 2016. The Mono platform was planned to be used to develop tools for mobile applications in C-sharp using .NET technologies, but stagnated and has not seen any major releases since 2019. Corrective updates continued to be published regularly. Since Mono was used in Wine to Run .NET based executables built for Windows, the Wine developers maintained a synchronized Wine Mono fork that was successfully maintained and regularly updated. After assessing the situation, Microsoft handed over the main project to the Wine community and made the Wine Mono repository the main one. The code in the old Mono repository will be transferred to archive mode. Previously generated ready-made assemblies will remain available for four years. At the same time, having transferred the original Mono to Wine, Microsoft will continue to support a more modern fork of Mono runtime included in the code base of the Open.NET platform. They plan to gradually transfer components of Microsoft projects that remain tied to Mono to this fork. Microsoft recommends that users of applications using Mono switch to using the general .NET platform, which includes Mono runtime. 
The Open Tofu Project, of open fork of the Terraform Configuration Management and Infrastructure Maintenance Automation Platform under the auspices of the Linux Foundation, has blocked access from Russian IP addresses to the registry.opentofu.org repository, through which modules and providers for use with Open Tofu are distributed. In addition, Open Tofu has removed providers from the repository for the Esbert Cloud, Yandex Cloud, and Rustac Cloud Platform cloud systems. Blocking access to the repository was done by unanimous decision of five members of the governing board as a measure to comply with sanctions by a company under U.S. jurisdiction. It is specified that the decision was made out of fear of legal problems for the company hosting the repository, even though previous legal analysts by the Apache Software Foundation, the Linux Foundation, and GitHub found that expert control restrictions do not apply to publicly available open source software and public repositories. Terminal Multiplexer GNU Screen 5.0.0 has been released, allowing you to have a multi-window interface in the console using one physical terminal to work with several applications, which are allocated several virtual terminals that remain active between different user sessions. 4M Linux 46.0 is now available, an independent minimalist user distribution which uses a graphical environment based on JWM. 4M Linux can be used not only as a live environment for playing multimedia files and solving user tasks, but also as a system for recovery from failures and a platform for running LAMP servers. A live x86-64 image with a graphical environment and a build with stripped down console environment are available for download. Media Goblin 0.14.0 has been published, a decentralized platform for sharing multimedia files. It is designed for hosting and sharing of media content, including photos, videos, audio files, 3D models, and PDF documents. Unlike centralized services like Flickr, YouTube, and SoundCloud, the Media Goblin platform is aimed at content sharing without being tied to a specific service and uses a model similar to StatusNet and Pump.io, which provides the ability to run a server on its own capacities. The project code is written in Python and is distributed on the the AGPLv3 license. Canonical has released Ubuntu 24.04.1 LTS, which includes updates to several hundred packages related to the elimination of vulnerabilities and problems affecting stability. The new version also fixes errors in the installer and bootloader. The release of Ubuntu 24.04.1 marked the completion of the basic stabilization of the LTS release. Users of the previous LTS branch, Ubuntu 22.04, will now be offered to upgrade to the 24.04 branch. At the same time, similar updates were presented for other official flavors with the same distro number, 24.04.1 LTS. Only use these for new installations. Previously installed Ubuntu 24.04 systems will receive all the changes present in Ubuntu 24.04.1 through the standard update installation system. Support for the release of updates and security fixes for the server and desktop editions of Ubuntu 24.04 LTS will last until April 29, plus another seven years for the users of the Ubuntu Pro service. The update in includes new corrective versions of GNOME, Mesa, NVIDIA graphics drivers, XDG desktop portal GNOME, OVN, SnapD, and AppArmor packages. The Ubuntu Core installer project has been added to the Live CD root FS package, and experimental support for building Ubuntu Core desktop installation images has been provided. The Linux firmware package implements support for DCN 3.5 and AMD GPUs. Support for the RISC-V platform has been improved. Support for Star 5 Vision 5.2 and all Winter Neja boards have been added. Identifiers for new browser Broadcom chips have been added. The problem with network booting of the Ubuntu desktop installer has been resolved. Integration of the new kernel version, drivers, and graphics stack components is expected in a planned February release of Ubuntu 24.04.2, as those components will be imported from the 24.10 release, which will not be ready until the fall and will require additional testing time. Elasticsearch BV announced that its data search analysis and storage platform and the Kibana web interface have returned to open source status. In addition to the proprietary ELV2 and SSPL licenses, the Elasticsearch and Kibana code will now be distributed under the free AGPLv3 license. Before switching to proprietary licenses, the product was distributed in the Apache 2.0 license, which continues to be used in the open search fork. The return of the open source code distribution model is explained by the resolution of problems with Amazon Web Services. After the change of license for Elasticsearch, Amazon began to invest in the development of its fork. Partnership relationships with AWS strengthened, confusion in the market disappeared, and Elasticsearch felt the disappearance of the former threat to its business. The AGPL license also imposes copyleft conditions, i.e. to include AGPL code from Elasticsearch in your project, the code base of your project must be relicensed under the AGPL license.
Wireshark 4.4 Network Analyzer has been published. The program supports more than a thousand network protocols and several dozen traffic capture formats. A flexible interface is provided for creating filters, capturing traffic, analyzing saved dumps, and inspecting packets. Such advanced features as reassembling the order of packets, selecting and saving the contents of files transmitted using different protocols, playing VOIP and RTP streams, decrypting IPsec, ISAKMP, Kerberos SNMP v3, SSL slash TLS, WEP and WPA slash WPA2 are supported. The project code is distributed under the GPL v2 license. Rhino Linux 2024.2 has been released. It is a variant of Ubuntu with a continuous update delivery model, allowing access to the latest versions of programs. New versions are merely transferred from the Devel branches of Ubuntu repositories, or packages with new versions of applications synchronized with Debian Unstable are built. Desktop components, the Linux kernel, boots, flash screens, themes, the Firefox browser, and utilities developed by the project are distributed through a separate Packstall repository. Installation images that can be booted in live mode are prepared for the x86 64 and ARM64 architectures, as well as for the PineTab, PineTab 2, PinePhone, PinePhone Pro, and Raspberry Pi ARM devices. The graphical interface is based on the proprietary Unicorn user environment, which is a fork of XFCE. It resembles GNOME, but remains lightweight. In Unicorn, the developers tried to combine a more modern design with a traditional approach to building a desktop. Plank Dock is used as a sidebar for applications, and the standard XFCE panel is used as the top panel. The app grid mode implemented, based off of LightPad, is used to navigate through installed applications. Linux from Scratch 12.2 LFS and Beyond Linux from Scratch 12.2 BLFS are available with the SysB init or SystemD init systems. Linux from Scratch provides instructions for building a basic Linux system from scratch using only the source code for the necessary software. Beyond Linux from Scratch supplements the LFS instructions with information on building and configuring more than a thousand software packages covering a variety of applications from databases, virtualization systems, and extended set of developer applications to graphical shells. Linux from Scratch 12.2 updates 45 packages and adds one new package, LZ4, including glibc 2.40, Linux kernel 6.10.5, bin utils 2.43.1, GCC 14.2.0, SystemD 256.4, SysV init 3.10, and more. Beyond LFS has over 1,750 updates, including many text changes to improve readability and major changes. GNOME has been updated to version 46, KDE Plasma to 6.1.4, and LXQT to version 2.0.0. Several new packages have been added, including free RDP, GNOME Connections replaces Vinagre, and Dolphin and Conversation from KDE have been added. A total of 32 packages have been added to support packages already in the book. In addition, 21 unsupported packages have been removed, including Python 2 and GTK2. It has been announced that QT5 will be removed in the future versions of BLFS. You've been listening to Full Circle Weekly News. For more details, see the next issue of the magazine at fullcirclemagazine.org or check the links in the show notes. You can contact me at bardmoss at pm.me. I'll see you next week.